story time about how I found out my husband was seeing escorts while I was pregnant. My husband and I have been married for six years. We had tried and tried for a baby, and we had a really hard time. The first three years of our marriage was hell. We tried so much to get pregnant, but we just couldn't do it. We went to the doctor, and that's when they told us that my husband had a little problem. So basically, he was the reason why we weren't able to get pregnant easily. Because of this, I had to undergo a lot of treatments. I started taking all this different medication, which really messed with my hormones. For the first time in my life, I got acne. I started to gain weight, and I also started getting mood swings. Unfortunately, my husband, for some reason, thought this was a character flaw of mine, and that basically I should just be able to control my emotions. I took him to the doctor so that the doctor could explain to him what was happening to my body. Finally, the doctor told him that everything that was happening to me was because of the medicine that I was taking for us to have kids. My husband decided to apologize to me and wanted to take me on a trip. He took me to Hawaii for two weeks and it was beautiful. We ended up making up and it was the best time ever. A month later, we found out that I was pregnant. My husband was the happiest I'd ever seen him. Two weeks later, I started noticing weird things in our bank account. I started sending $5,000 to one person in particular every single month. That's when I noticed that every single month, he would send somebody $5,000. It had been happening for three months. Right away, I was suspicious. A few months back, he and I had watched a documentary about escorts. And during the documentary, he kept judging all the women and the men. You know, acting greater than thou. And as soon as I saw the payments on our bank account, it's like a light bulb went off in my head. He must have seen that documentary and been like, wow, I know I can do that. Of course he can. My husband is a 40-year-old, good-looking, wealthy man. So that's when I started investigating. I had full access to his laptop, which had all of his text messages, as well as emails. And he never bothered to change his password on any of it. I waited for him to leave to the gym, and that's when I got on his laptop. And I uncovered a whole ring of of escorts. Not only was he sending money to one girl through our bank account, he was paying other girls through Bitcoin. As I was crying in front of the laptop, I had the presence of mind to start adding up all the money he had spent. In only three months, my husband managed to spend $55,000. And from what I could gather, he had about five escorts. Keep in mind, he's doing all of this while I'm pregnant. So here's what I did. I managed to contact each girl and ask for the money back. And I basically threatened to expose them. One was a teacher. The other was a model, which I could contact her agency and accuse her. One was actually a stay-at-home mom who was married only one responded to my messages finally one of the escorts got back to me and she told me that she would give me all of the money back my husband had given this girl seven thousand dollars in the time span of two weeks then she spilled all the tea she told me my husband had signed up to an escort website and that he had anywhere between 10 and 15 girls so there were other ways he was paying them and i just didn't know about it this is when i came to my senses i told her she did not need to send the money back to him because it wasn't her fault it was my husband's fault then this girl told me that my husband would talk bad about me to her and that they would meet up at fancy hotels and that's when he would tell her that I was a toxic wife and that all I cared about was money. By the way, I make my own money. I told her I was pregnant and she was mortified. I gathered up all the evidence and I confronted my husband. That's when he said, finally, I don't have to hide it anymore. He told me that he didn't really think I would care. Since when? I asked him to tell me the truth and tell me how many girls he was seeing and how much money he had spent. And he confessed that he had seen over 20 girls and probably spent over $100,000. Then he asked me for a divorce. I'm kind of glad he did because I was going to divorce him anyway. I am going to get his money and raise our child on our own. His family is trying to convince me otherwise, though. What should I do? Hi, I'm Janelle. I live in Pennsylvania with my single dad and older brother. Please like and subscribe. Growing up, my brother Mason and I were total besties. He was only a year older than me, so we always had tons in common. We could play board games and kickball without going easy on each other. And at night, Mason and I would talk for hours hours in bed. Dad was kind of confused by how we were with each other. Kids, you know you guys can fight every once in a while like a normal brother and sister, right? But Mason and I were inseparable. There was just one problem. Dad totally favored me over Mason. He went to all of my school plays and sports games in elementary school and was the loudest cheerleader in the crowd. Watch out, everybody. That's my girl there. But for some reason, Dad was always picking on my brother. Apparently, every little thing Mason did was wrong. Don't put syrup on your eggs. Eat breakfast like a normal person. Cut it out with the video games. A boy like you should be playing more sports. Build a little more muscle. Mason was really skinny and small. People often thought I was way older than him. He would always come to me whenever Dad would upset him. Why does Dad hate me so much? What's wrong with me? Nothing's wrong with you. You're perfect. Dad's just weird. But halfway through eighth grade... I got a taste of what Mason was going through. I had a huge growth spurt, and suddenly, I was taller than all the boys and girls in my class. Everyone started acting like I was some alien. Have you ever bumped your head on the ceiling? What? That's not even possible. I can barely see past her chin. But Mason always came to my rescue when kids were annoying me. Who cares if Janelle's tall? She looks older and prettier than all of you. 
but deep down, I think Mason was relieved that my life wasn't perfect at school. At least we were more equal that way, because at home, Dad seemed to love me even more now because I was so tall. Tall people can get anything they want. She could be a supermodel or a basketball player. Endless possibilities. But then one day in eighth grade, a girl made a comment that made Mason snap in half. Her name was Alyssa, and she was new in my class. Alyssa was also a child gymnast who'd competed all across the country. Janelle, are you this kid's babysitter? How come he's always with you at school? Janelle isn't my babysitter. She's my sister. And I'm 14, for your information. I'm a year older than her. Mason stormed off, his eyes on fire. I hated being called Mason's babysitter, too. But why did he care so much? That night, I noticed Mason scribbling away in a notebook after dinner, not looking up once while we watched TV together. Mason, what are you writing? Nothing. Don't look. But I couldn't stop wondering what Mason was hiding from me, and if he was okay. So after he was asleep, I crept into his room and reached for his notebook, and I couldn't believe my eyes. Mason had written tons of love poems for Alyssa. They were beautiful. I had to convince him to show them to her. Alyssa needed to know how sweet my brother was. But the next day, I found him in a corner of the playground, wrestling a bunch of guys while some kids cheered from the sides. Mason, what are you doing? We're having a wrestling match. Suddenly, I spotted Alyssa among the crowd. Was this how Mason was trying to impress her? And he was just getting his butt beaten. Hey, Mason, how about you wrestle your sister? Yeah, come on, Mason, let's wrestle. Mason didn't look too happy about it, but I planned to make him win. Ten seconds into the match, he suddenly tripped over my shoe. He fell face first onto the ground, and it looked like I'd won instantly. <laughs> How does it feel to lose your own sister, dude? He literally fights like a girl. Mason turned bright red. He dusted himself off and glared at me. What's wrong with you? How could you humiliate me like that? I was gonna let you win, but you tripped. Mason walked away angrily to pick up his backpack, but I got to it first and pulled out his notebook. What do you think you're doing? Give that back. Look, I know it was wrong, but I read your notebook, okay? And I know you were just trying to impress Alyssa back there. If you really want to do that, do it with this. How, how dare you read that? And you don't know what you're talking about. I was just worried about you. You can be mad at me later, but come on. Just tell Alyssa you love her. She has to see these poems. Suddenly, someone snatched the notebook from my hand, and I turned around to see it was one of Alyssa's friends, and she was also standing right behind us with her mouth half open. Oh, we've got a lover boy here. Her eyes are so deep, I find myself drowning. <laughs> what is this lameness? Mason snatched the notebook from him, and he gave me a look of hatred as he fought back angry tears and ran away. I felt terrible. This is not how I'd meant for things to go. It took Mason a week to even look at me. He forgave me eventually. But after that day, things changed between us. We didn't talk or hang out much anymore. Instead, I became best friends with Alyssa. She never mentioned the playground incident, but I was still hoping I could somehow set her up with Mason one day. We started hanging out all the time, and one day, she even took me to her gymnastics practice. I was standing on the side when suddenly... Alyssa's coach pointed to me. Hey, you, are you also a gymnastics student? Me? No, <laughs> you have the perfect build for it. We have some extra costumes if you want to try out. Please, Janelle? Oh, it'll be so fun having you in my practice. I decided to give it a go, and it turned out I was really flexible. My tall, skinny frame, which I'd always hated, was actually perfect for a gymnast. Oh my god, you totally have what it takes. Janelle, you should train with me. And from that day on, I took up gymnastics training, and when I was good enough, I joined Alyssa's team. And of course, Dad was now obsessed with my newfound talent. He decided to become my manager and did everything in his power to connect me with agents and institutions that would help me get to the top. You need to compete in every national competition, Janelle. Who knows? In a few years, we'll be in the Olympics. I'm gonna make you a star, honey. Mason, on the other hand, decided to take on playwriting. Every day, he'd lock himself in his room and write for hours. Most of the time, we barely saw him. Eventually, he decided to apply to a fancy college for creative writing, and he got in. I was so proud of him, but unfortunately, 
Dad wasn't as supportive as his dreams as mine. You want to be a writer? Might as well live in my basement for the rest of your life. I'm not paying for any hippie writing school. But this is my dream, Dad. To be useless is your dream? Look at Janelle. She's just entering into a competition with Alyssa, and it has a prize of $50,000. She's already going places, and you're just asking me for money for a stupid profession. This is a huge opportunity for Mason. You have to help him out, Dad. He's got to figure it out for himself. I couldn't care less. And he just walked away. Mason, don't worry. I have a plan. If I win this competition, I can pay for your school. Whatever, Janelle. It doesn't matter. I don't matter. Dad has always made that very clear. You matter to me. But Mason just walked away and locked himself in his bedroom. I slipped him notes underneath his door, but he refused to talk to me. I had to get that $50,000. I trained every morning with Alyssa until the day of the competition. Dad decided at some point he was going to coach me as well as manage me. And he went crazy. 4 a.m. tomorrow, ladies. Last one to arrive runs 10 laps around the gym. Please, do something. I know it sucks, but I have to get that money for Mason. Let's go. Come on. On the day of the competition, I waited by the gymnastic bars while Alyssa did her routine. This was it. Come on, Alyssa. You can do it. But just as I yelled, Alyssa slipped from the top bar and fell on her arm. Everyone was gathered around Alyssa as I ran forward and tried to squeeze my way to her. But suddenly, Dad pulled me away. Listen, honey. The medical team is looking after her. She'll be fine. The competition is still going on. You need to focus. But, Dad, I have to see if Alyssa is okay. I'll do that. Don't you worry about a thing. Now go. My team had lost tons of points because of Alyssa's fall. But when I did my routine, I earned them all back. We actually ended up winning. I stood on the stage with my team and received a medal and the cash prize. Mason could go to school now. But I couldn't stop thinking about Alyssa and I ran off to visit her at the hospital right after the competition. But when I arrived, Alyssa was already there with another visitor. My brother. Mason, what are you doing here? He came to check on me right after I broke my arm. Mason's been with me all day. Alyssa, you know I would have come for you too if I didn't have to perform. Just then, Mason saw the medal around my neck. You won? You didn't come to visit your best friend because you wanted to win? What? No, I wanted to win for all of us. You want to know why I fell, Janelle? The doctor said it was because of exhaustion. I've been competing all my life, but you and your dad pushed me so hard because all you two care about is winning at any cost. You're the reason I got hurt. But I, I never wanted this to happen to you. I was just trying to help Mason, but I guess I went too far. I left the hospital and ran as fast as I could to the gym. The lights were out and it was empty. I sat alone next to the bars and cried until my head hurt. Then suddenly my phone rang and it was Dad. How's my star winner? Your star winner is horrible. Alyssa broke her arm and it's all my fault. I put too much pressure on her. <laughs> but look how you shone, darling. Alyssa caused you stress and you performed better than ever in that situation. Are you kidding me? You're the reason I was stressed. You wanted me to win so bad so you could have some trophy daughter to brag about. And if I didn't win, Mason couldn't go to school. I know his dreams mean nothing to you, but they mean everything to me. I hung up the phone before Dad could answer. I ran back to the hospital to talk to Alyssa. I know you're mad at me, but I really want to apologize to you. It's okay, Janelle. I'm sorry I got mad before. I know your dad was the one pressuring you and that you were really just trying to help Mason. Really? Yep, really. Also, Mason gave me a few presents when he was here with me at the hospital. I looked down to see pages from Mason's notebook, all those poems he'd written for Alyssa ages ago. Mason told me he was really mad at you that day. You shouldn't have read his poems, but I guess your advice stuck with him, and he finally decided to show them to me, and I'm so glad he did. I reached over Alyssa's bed and hugged her, and you guessed it, Mason finally won Alyssa over, and they were an item. And just a month later, Alyssa was fully recovered and back doing gymnastics. But I still had to take care of some unfinished business. Dad, just so you know, I'm not talking to you until you apologize for everything. Settle down, honey. I'll make it up to you. How about giving Mason money for school? That's how you can make it up to me. Why? You're already doing that. You're the dad. You're supposed to be paying for my college, not Janelle. I'm not paying for that hippie school. End of story. I'm not talking to you then. 
Don't be a drama queen. Your sister doesn't whine like you do. Dad, if you can't support Mason's dreams, I'm not talking to you either. Mason and I both distanced ourselves from Dad, and I paid for Mason's college. While he was becoming a professional writer, I traveled all across America competing in gymnastic tournaments. But one day, I received a surprising email from Mason's university. It said that he hadn't been attending classes for weeks and hadn't been responding to any of their emails either. That was strange. I spoke to him every other day. But when I asked him, he gave me some really shocking news. Janelle, Dad's really sick. I've been really busy taking care of him, so I couldn't go to university. I didn't want to worry you, but I think you should come and see him. I flew home that night and went straight to Dad's place. I found him in bed, looking really weak. Dad, what happened? Are you okay? Oh, Janelle, you're here. And yeah, I'm okay. I'm so happy to see you. Mason has been taking real good care of me. He really has, Dad. He's missed some really important stuff at universities just so he could be with you. No, I just did what I had to do. He's my dad. You know, Mason, I've been thinking about some things for a while, and I'm really sorry I was so hard on you. I was only trying to push you to be the best, but I didn't have to. You were always a great kid. Thanks for apologizing, Dad. It really means a lot to me. And me too. I'm so glad you finally see how great Mason is, Dad. You two always looked out for each other, didn't you? I love you kids. We love you too, Dad. And Janelle, I know I don't say it as much as I used to, but you're my best friend, and I love you. I love you too.